In the Cold War, the military is looking for any type of technological edge that it can get. So, so many crazy ideas are being thrown out to try and figure out what is going to be the thing that changes the face of the battlefield. The military becomes very interested in this idea of allowing troops to rapidly move over the ground. Not on the ground, but over the ground. Traditionally, one of the problems in a battlefield, there are mines or snipers. So a way of getting over those mines would be really, really useful. That goal leads to this bizarre contraption. It's the brainchild of inventor Charles Zimmerman. Zimmerman's background is in working in helicopters, and he recognized that having a rotor assembly would provide the lift capability for the platform. A rifleman on a flying platform will ascend into the air, flying across the battlefield while delivering suppressing fire toward the enemy against an opposing force that cannot do that. But why be conventional? Instead of having the rotor blades on top like a normal chopper, Zimmerman flips the bird upside down and puts the blades on the bottom. This allegedly makes it more stable and more useful on the battlefield. The idea is that you could steer it much like you can steer a Segway. You lean into it, lean to the left, go to the left, lean to the right, go to the right. This thing is kind of like a magic carpet. It can fly up to 30 feet in the air and go 16 miles an hour. So it's pretty fast compared to somebody moving over the ground. The VZ-1 Pawnee, as it's known, sounds promising. But there's a problem. Talking about shooting fish in a barrel, here this loud thing is coming at you at 16 miles per hour. You hear it from far off, and you have plenty of time to take aim and unleash. So they ask the inventor, make it be able to fly higher and go even faster. But instead of higher and faster, the new version goes lower and slower. It also turns out that wind is a huge problem for this platform. Even a little bit of wind can cause it to become incredibly unstable, which means it's not usable in basically any situation. Every idea does not pan out. It just didn't perform in a way appropriate for warfare. But I want one. If a flying platform sounds insane, what about an inflatable airplane you can pack inside an airplane? Another interesting idea that comes out of Cold War thinking is how do you help a downed pilot behind enemy lines get back home? So Goodyear comes up with the idea of dropping an inflatable aircraft behind enemy lines to assist that pilot in escaping quickly. In 1956, Goodyear, the company known for tires, unveils the Inflatoplane, also known as the Inflato Bird. It's made of a special rubber nylon blend. Unbelievably, when it's unpacked, it actually flies. So the pilot opens up this crate, and there's a motor in there that does the inflating, and it inflates itself in five minutes, kind of like when you go camping and you have a motor on your air mattress and you're inflating it. But instead of sleeping on it, you're going to fly in it. This is not a toy airplane. Its range is 400 miles. It can go up to 70 miles an hour, and it can get up to 10,000 feet. Not only that, the way the plane is constructed as the engine is running is actually pushing air back into the structure of the airplane. And so it can take up to six 30 caliber gunshot punctures without deflating. If you're thinking this invention is too good to be true, you might be right. During testing, there are some problems. This is not a rigid framed aircraft. There are pilots who go up in the inflato plane and they find that they have to fly it delicately. Otherwise, the wings fold in on themselves. One test pilot tried to go up too fast and the wing buckled and actually folded over onto itself, totally cutting their lift. That pilot fortunately survived. Another pilot is not so lucky. As he's flying, a support cable holding the wing structure breaks, and the wing folds over onto the propeller, causing the entire plane to go down. Sadly, the pilot loses his life. And after that, this project was killed. It's a great idea, it sounds amazing, but it's just not practical. Remarkably, the Inflato plane isn't even the strangest plane of its time. 
In 2012, the United States government decides to declassify documents that are labeled Project 1794, dated 1956, and we're seeing what appears to be a UFO. The plans describe a flying disc that's able to reach speeds of Mach 4 and an altitude of 100,000 feet. But why would the military need this alien-looking flyer? So during the Cold War, if America goes to war with the Soviet Union, they might take out all the military runways to prevent our aircraft from taking off. So what does someone think of? Well, we need a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Enter Jack Frost, who comes up with an idea. Instead of creating an aircraft that has wings, why not create an aircraft that looks just like a giant disc? Frost believes his curved disc will have the lift to leave a more traditional plane in the dust. The US military is extremely excited by this concept, and they throw a bunch of money in the sky's direction to build this aircraft. And so in 1959, Frost presents the Avro Car VZ-9, and it works. Kind of. The Avro Car goes into its test flight, and remember, He's trying to achieve Mach 3, 4 at 100,000 feet. He gets three feet off the ground and goes 30 miles per hour. And as you might imagine, the people who wrote the check, they had a few questions for Jack. Eventually, the Avro car is shelved. Another Cold War big swing that doesn't live up to the hype.